In my last couple videos, I solved a few of the Port Swigger Web Security Academy labs, and I really like doing those because I feel like they do a good job of introducing some really important concepts in a really approachable way. So I figured I would do at least one more of those labs before I move on to something else. And this time I'm going to do one on remote code execution via web shell upload. So the main thing we're going to be talking about in this lab is where a website will have some sort of file upload functionality. You see this a lot in websites where they have like a profile function where you can upload a profile picture or something like that. And sometimes they don't do a very good job of validating what kind of file you can actually upload. So if we read the instructions to this lab, it says, this lab contains a vulnerable image upload function. It doesn't perform any validation on the files users upload before storing them on the server's file system. To solve the lab, upload a basic PHP web shell and use it to exfiltrate the contents of the file slash home slash Carlos slash secret. Poor Carlos, we're always messing with this guy. Submit this secret using the button provided in the lab banner. So this is the exact kind of situation I'm talking about. Imagine that if Facebook or some website like that did not validate what kind of pictures you could upload, and instead of uploading a .jpeg or something, you uploaded a .php. And then every time someone tried to open what was supposed to be your profile picture, it actually executed PHP code. So this can be a major vulnerability and that's the kind of thing that we're gonna look for in this lab. So as usual, I'm going to access the lab and I'm actually gonna open it in a second tab so I can refer back to the instructions if I need to. Once the lab opens, I'm going to copy the URL and then I'm gonna open Burp Suite. I'm going to open browser in Burp. Then I'm going to paste the URL into that browser and launch it inside my Burp Suite browser. And now I should be getting that web traffic in my Burp Suite proxy. So as usual, we just have this little blog website here. And if we click on my account, it gives us a little login page and we can use the credentials that they gave us in the instructions to log in. And when we do that, we see this little page where it has a field where we can update our email address. And there's a field where we can upload an avatar and change our profile picture. So the instructions told us that this is a vulnerable image upload functionality and we can upload a PHP web shell. But if we didn't know that and we were just testing a random website and we came across this sort of functionality, this should automatically trigger something in our brain that this is something we need to double check and make sure you can't upload something other than an image file. So I'm just gonna make a little test file that I can upload just to see if it will let me upload something other than a PNG or a JPEG or something like that. So I'm not actually gonna do anything with this file. I'm just going to make it a .php extension and I'm just gonna put some sort of content inside it. Then I'm going to go back to our little website here and I'm gonna choose file and I'm just gonna select that test.php file that I just created. And I'm gonna click upload and it says the file avatar slash test.php has been uploaded. So it told us that it is accepting that PHP extension. So we know that it is vulnerable to some sort of file upload vulnerability. And they actually went a step further because they actually told us the path to that file and where it's uploaded. So if we go back to our account page, we see that where there used to be just this little blank icon where nothing had been uploaded as our avatar, now there's this little icon that shows that there's a file, but it can't be displayed. And if we look back in Burp Suite and our proxy history, we see that when we loaded this page, there was a git request that was to slash files slash avatars slash test.php. And when we look down in the response, we see that there's the contents of our PHP file that we uploaded. So not only can we upload that PHP file, but we can also execute that PHP file by loading our avatar in the web browser. Since we know that we can upload our own custom PHP code and we can execute them in the web browser, we can do so many things. We could put together a PHP reverse shell and just upload that and then have full access to the entire server through a reverse shell functionality. But because the instructions of the file says to solve the lab, all we have to do is exfiltrate the contents of this particular file, we can just upload a PHP file that does specifically that and not have to worry about getting a full reverse shell. I'm not a great PHP coder by any stretch, so I'm not gonna be able to program an entire reverse shell using PHP or anything like that. There are other people that are much better at that kind of thing than I am, but I was able to do a little bit of research and figure out how to use PHP to echo a particular file. And this little one-liner that I have right here should do the job. So I'm gonna save this as test2.php, and then I'm gonna try uploading that just like you did with the last one and see if we can get what we need. 
Once again, I'm here on my account page and I'm gonna choose file to select the file that we wanna upload. And this time I've selected test2.php and it says the file was uploaded and then I'm gonna go back to my account. And once again, we see over in our proxy history in Burp, it made a get request to that PHP file when it loaded this page, because right there is that file that's supposed to be loading. It's supposed to be a profile picture, but instead it's executing our PHP code. And if we take a look at that request, we see here's the request and here is the response. And in the instructions, it says submit this secret using the button provided in the lab banner. So back at the banner of the lab, there's this submit solution button. We're going to click that. We're going to paste that secret into the banner and then we're going to click OK. And congratulations, you solved the lab. So this was another pretty simple lab from the Web Security Academy, but if you think about it beyond just, I want to get the solution so I can solve the lab and get the points and think about it more as how it applies to real websites that you might be testing if you're a pen tester or doing bug bounty hunting or anything like that, you can think about how this could be used if there's a social media website or a forum website or anything like that, that lets you upload a profile picture, if they're not doing that validation on the type of file that you're uploading, you could use this to access really sensitive parts of the file system. So if you're ever looking at a website that has any sort of upload functionality like that, you should always check it to see if you can upload something other than a JPEG or a PNG or whatever kind of file that they're asking for. I think this is going to be a pretty short video this time, but if there are any more of these labs from Web Security Academy or Try Hack Me or Hack the Box or any of those kind of things, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do going forward.